I think it's fair to say both our leaders agree an integral part of the nation's recovery rests on education. So party policy under scrutiny with this question for Helen Clark. Hi, I'm Andrew from Auckland. We're in the middle of a global financial crisis and New Zealand is staring at 10 years of deficits. Helen Clark has announced the removal of income testing on student allowances that will cost our country $210 million a year. Can she please explain how this is not a blatant election bribe for the student vote using our money? Thank you. Is it a bribe, Helen Clark? I've always had a dream, Mark, that as Prime Minister, I would be able to lead a government which could do for today's generation of young people what was done for yours and mine, where we got significantly more support. Didn't mean that we didn't need our parents backing us if they could. Didn't mean that we didn't spend every last minute of our holidays working in all sorts of jobs. And I did the plastic factory, the toy factory, the glass factory, and so on in my holiday jobs. But we did have an allowance going through. Now, at the moment, a full allowance is available to a student whose parent's income goes up to the average wage. Now, then it starts to abate out. And a lot of our families are not in a position to give a lot of help. So, of course, the young people have been borrowing. What I'm saying is that over four years, and it is taking four years, we can move to give young people the chance our generation had. Do you want to give them that chance as well, John Key? My holiday jobs were cleaning out the chickens, so I think Helen's jobs were better than mine. Look, I, no one's arguing there's not inherent uh, fair, uh, unfairness, actually, in the student allowances at the moment. Some people can rearrange your incomes. So there needs to be changes, and we will announce some changes. But I don't think we can afford a universal student allowance at over $200 million a year when it's fully rolled out at this point. My number one priority in education is standards. Lifting literacy and numeracy. One in five young New Zealanders leaving school, they can't read, write or do maths so you, um, near their chronological age, or at least they don't have NCAA You wouldn't adopt this policy? One. Not on the time frame, no. We, we can't afford to go universal. We're, we're sitting there saying, look, the books got opened last, last week, a decade of deficits down the barrel. We're sitting there saying, we've made some tough choices. Yes, we'll do a bit better, but we can't afford to go universal. And we think that's responsible. When, when I made big spending promises a while ago, Helen Clark said I was irresponsible. We're on the election campaign trail. Seems it's a little okay, bit I want to bring Shane Taurimu in now. Shane. Helen Clark, uh, John Key was just talking about Level 1 in CEA. Now, the stats tell us that one in two Māori boys leave school without Level 1 in CEA. You've been in government for nine years now. In respect of that, aren't, haven't you failed Māori and indeed the wider community? No, because what's happened is that with near full employment in New Zealand and very little unemployment, it's been entirely possible for young people to drift away from school and go straight into a job. And because we've increased the minimum wage a lot, that looks attractive to a lot. But I've announced a very big reform in secondary education, which is really about making it relevant and personal to each young person where they're at. That's why a Labor government will introduce the concept of a youth apprenticeship for young people from the age of 13, year nine on, so that we have many more options in our school system to get the interest of those young people. I know there's young people of 13, 14, 15 years of age. They're not interested in the English poetry class. They're not interested in the physics or the biology or the geography, but they do believe no, they would make a in wonderful that? chef or carpenter, and we need to cater to their interests, and we Mark, will. with due respect to Helen Clark, actually, she hasn't answered the question, and she's missing the point. It's not about apprenticeships. We favour apprenticeships in schools as well. Shane asked a very interesting question about one in two Maori young people leaving without NCEA Level 1. We're going to have a thing called national standards. Aged five, your child will go to school. There'll be a national standard for reading and writing and maths. You'll be able to understand exactly where your child is. There'll be a report that you can understand in plain English. But most importantly, there'll be an action plan. If this country continues to have so many young New Zealanders that can't read and write, what is going to be the future of our country when we've got tens of thousands of New Zealand? Look, there are 30,000 youngsters truant from school every, every day under Helen Clark's watch. Why? Because the school is not relevant for them, because they can't read and write well, properly. Because I don't think truancy is a new phenomenon, though, John Key. But, like, but the like, numbers I, are much larger, But I do want to move on to our next... Nine years I do, of failure to I, deal with... I do want to move on to our, our next schools. YouTube question. This one is for you, and it's over school funding. Yeah. Hi, Josh White of Auckland. 
The Education Act 1989 Part 1 Section 3 states that every New Zealander between the ages of 5 and 19 has the right to a free state education. However, under current funding, many schools are resorting to calling for donations in excess of four or $500, some in excess of $1,000. This, on top of costs such as uniform and stationery, are making the burden far too much for some families. What, if anything, would either party do to help rectify this funding situation? Well, firstly, Josh is actually right. For a lot of New Zealand families, they've been asked to dip in their pockets and to give a lot to the school. Uh, some can afford it, and quite frankly, some cannot. Uh, I've, I think it comes back to a point of emphasis here. We have argued as a National Party very strongly that we believe money should be going on frontline services, not on that build-up of the bureaucracy. And we've made a conscious decision. When I came earlier on and said, we'll cap the number of bureaucrats. Why are we doing that? Not because we don't want armies of people giving us advice, but because we're saying when it comes to a choice between mum and dad being asked to put more their hand deeper in their pocket to pay for their school donation, or to have another policy analyst in Wellington, I'm going to take mum and dad and let them have that money so they can help make ends meet. So, so are you saying that, that, that under your watch, once you've sorted out the bureaucrats, parents will not have to cough up money? Uh, of course they'll have to pay. Look, they'll have, they'll, they'll have to... Every, every New Zealand school, pretty much, is asking their parents to put their hand in their pocket for something. And I think for most parents, if they can afford to do that, that's advancing their education of the, and the experience that the youngsters have, whether it's a school trip or whatever. I'm just saying, over time, that emphasis has okay. got to change. More's got to be in that operational grant, less in the bureaucracy. Helen Clark, I mean, is it free education when parents are having to cough up that sort of money? Well, firstly, no parent has to pay that donation. They feel obliged no to, though. I, I know people like to meet requests from schools, but they do not They're have embarrassed to if pay, they don't pay Now, the second thing is, Mark, if they we have pay. hugely increased the investment in education on the front line, in the teachers, in smaller class sizes, in technology in so many ways. I am absolutely committed to our public education system. I'm a product of it all the way through. What I'm not going to do, though, is have any system of school certificate for six-year-olds, which John well, wants, not with school, this national not testing. School for and can I say, Mark, that can I say that if it is fable, such a great idea, a why does fable. the teaching well, profession in toto oppose it? Well, Teachers okay. know that if you okay, have okay. to teach to a test all the time, you cannot do the best for your students. As, and as, I, 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 I want to finish, because okay. John's had a lot to say on education. I want well, to that's finish and so much say, in education and I've got a lot moment. to say about it, and I'm passionate about it, and I know we've done great things. But what I want to say is our teachers tell me that they assess and assess and assess. They do reports. They are available to talk to our parents about how their children are doing. And that's as it should be. But is it education be for the kids feedback. or the teachers, Mark, Helen Clark? Look, well, education course, is for children. The only thing that matters is children, Mark, how they're learning, how we support that, and how we support Mark, the teachers to of, do their very, course, very best. Teachers, very briefly, teachers, John teachers do a fantastic job. I'm not arguing against that. But there has been a failure for, for literally tens of thousands of New Zealanders that aren't getting those educational standards. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to sit back under my watch and allow those New Zealanders to slip through the net so that they can't compete in the modern economy, they're left with no options, they go on to a, some of them to okay, a life of crime. We, that's wrong. We're going to talk about the relative merits. No, we are not, John, and you know, failed major Excuse me, excuse me both of you, we can talk about the relative oh, merits of true, both of your watches very shortly mark. because you can decide on the issues or you may decide on the leaders. We look at what qualities they bring in the final part of tonight's debate.